Hello everybody and welcome to uh, tutorial two. Today we'll be looking at modeling electrical and mechanical systems. So now we're going to jump into our first problem here, our electric circuit. So to start off to do this, what we're actually want to do is we want to solve it using Kirchhoff's voltage law. So what we're going to do is we're going to assign a loop. So loop number one, which will have current I1 and loop number two that will have current I2. Before we actually go into the loop equations, we need to know uh, three main factors, and that is the voltage uh, across the resistor, the inductor, as well as the capacitor. So we know from our previous classes that a voltage across a resistor is equal to the current through the resistor times the actual resistance of the resistor. And then the voltage across a capacitor is equal to one over the capacitance, and then the integral of the current with respect to time. And for inductors, the voltage is equal to the inductance times the derivative of the current with respect to time. So we're gonna use this going forward to actually create our differential equations. So now we're gonna have a look at loop number one. So when we look at loop one, we see that we have a voltage source, Vt, and that is going to be equal to the sum of the voltage drops as we go throughout this loop. So we have I1 times R1 for this resistor here. L1 times the derivative of current with respect to time. Plus uh, the capacitance, the voltage of the capacitor, so 1 over C1. And this is going to be the integral of I1 minus I2. Then finally we have the voltage of the uh, last resistor here, which is also going to be um, the difference between the, the current I1 and I2. So this is our first loop equation. So what we're going to do now is we're going to take this equation and we're going to put it into the, the Laplace domain. So we're going to take the Laplace of both sides, and so we'll add this notation here. All right, so now we're gonna put it into the Laplace domain. So our VTs and our Is are gonna actually come capital V with respect to the S domain or frequency domain, and our Is are gonna become capital Is in order to denote the Laplace domain. So we have Vs is equal to I1, R1, plus L1, the der derivative of I1 with respect to T. So what we're gonna have is we're gonna have S times I1 plus our initial condition of I1. And so in the problem, it is actually stated that initial conditions go to zero. So that eliminates that term. Then we have one over uh, the capacitance of one plus S I1 minus I2 plus R2 I1 minus I2. So now what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna group these into like terms. So we're gonna have Vs is equal to I1. We go R1 from here. Then from here, we're gonna have an L1S. And then we're gonna look into here. We're gonna have a uh, one over C1S as well as an R2. And then we're gonna actually subtract our I2s because we have both negatives there. So we're gonna have a subtract symbol there. I2, one over C1S plus R2. 
So this is the form for loop one of this electric circuit model. So now looking at loop two, we have no voltage sources at loop two. So zero is going to be equal to the integral of the current going through capacitor two. So we're going to have I2 dt plus L2 di2 dt um, plus R2 I2 minus I1. And then we are going to have plus 1 over C1, uh, the integral of I2 minus I1 to dt. So that's the sum of the voltages for loop number two. So we're going to go forward and we're going to do the Laplace. I'll forget the notation now. We've done the notation enough. So we're going to have zero is equal to one over C2S uh, I2 plus L2 S I2 plus your initial condition for I2. So I2 naught, which again we stated was zero plus R2 I2 minus I1 plus 1 over C1 S I2 minus I1. So again, same thing that we did with loop number one. We're going to actually group it into like terms here. So we're going to have 0 is equal to I2 1 over C2 S plus L2 S plus R2 plus 1 over C1 S. And then we're going to, um, again, we're going to subtract I1. We're going to subtract I1. And we're going to have the terms R2 um, plus 1 over C1S. And then this is the model of your second loop. And that is the answer to the first tutorial question for tutorial two. Uh, now we're going to move on to problem two. So what we have here is a mechanical system with uh, two masses. And again, we're going to create the differential equations for the system and then convert them to Laplace domain. And then uh, separate them into our y1 and our y2. All right, so now we're going to look at mass number one. And we're going to look at the forces that are going to be applied to it. So we have our force applied, which is F with respect to T. And then we have our forces of our spring and our dampers. So we're going to look at K1 first. So the, the displacement of Y1 down is going to result in a force on mass 1 up due to spring uh, K1. So we're going to denote that here. K1 times displacement of Y1. Next, we're going to look at the damper. So damper creates a force with respect to the velocity. And therefore, this force can be the result of y1 prime, or the derivative of y with respect to time. Next, we're going to look at the spring uh, k2 at the bottom. So we're going to analyze it this way. We're going to assume that y2 is moving, uh, is further displaced than y1, resulting in a force down on M1. So K2 is going to equal to the displacement of Y2 minus the displacement of Y1. So now we have our summation of forces on our mass. And we all know that sum of forces equals the mass times the acceleration. So we have our mass. And then the acceleration of the mass would be Y1 double dot. So m1 y1 double dot is going to be equal to the sum of our forces. So as y1 is down for positive, all the forces acting down will be positive in our, our equation as well. So we're going to have ft plus 
k2, y2 minus y1. Then we're going to subtract these two forces here, which is k1, y1, and b1, y1 prime. OK, so the next step is we're actually going to take the Laplace of this. And so we're going to rewrite this. OK, so now we're going to take the Laplace of this term here. So we're going to have m1 s squared y1 um, minus s uh, y0 minus s y prime0. So it's actually stated in this problem that these two terms are assumed to be 0. So we can cross those out. And we have our force in our frequency domain plus our spring with y2 minus y1 for the spring at the bottom of the, the model uh, minus k1 y1 minus b1 s y1 minus s or y1 not which again goes to zero all right, so the next, we're going to quickly simplify this. And what we're actually going to do is we're going to bring f of s to this side and then all the other terms to the other side. And then again, we will simplify. So we have terms of y2 and y1. So f of s going to go to this side is going to equal to m1 s squared y1 minus k2 y2 minus y1 plus k1, y1, plus b1, s, y1. So now we're going to simplify this even further. So we have our y2s and our y1s uh, separate from each other. So we have f of s is equal to y1. We're going to group all the y1 terms. So m1, s squared. We're going to look at here. So we're going to do uh, plus, um, do plus k2. And we're also going to do plus k1. And then we're going to do plus B, b1 s. And then for terms for y2, we're going to do y2. Then we're going to look at here, and we only have one, which is actually negative um, k2. Okay, so that is a solution for the sum of masses, the little plus or sum of forces the little plus domain for mass number one. So now we're going to go ahead and look at mass number two. So this actually only has one force acting back up. And that'll be the same force uh, up uh, acting here. So we have e equal and opposite reaction. Okay. So we're going to look at this. And we know that m2, y2, double prime, so the acceleration of this mass is equal to, since we're going opposite the direction, we're going to go minus k2 y2 minus y1. Then we're going to take the Laplace of the system. And we're going to go m2 s squared y2 plus s y2 naught plus y2 uh, naught prime is equal to negative k y2 minus y1. And again, these initial conditions go to 0. And there, we're going to switch everything to our one side. So we're going to have 0 is equal to um, m2 s squared y2 um, plus k2 y2 minus k2 
uh, y1. So now we're going to group these together, and we're going to have y2 is equal to m2s squared plus k2 minus y1 k2. And that is the solution for our second mass. And so that is the model in the Laplace domain for this system here. All right, so now we're going to go over problem three. And what this uh, mechanical system actually mo models is uh, the wheel of your car, which is down at this point, actually hitting something like a speed bump. So you can see the response. So RT would actually be the displacement of the bottom of your wheel. And then you're going to see how your M1, which uh, would be your tire, and then your M2, which is actually the mass of the car, responds to it. So what we're going to do is we're going to uh, solve this, uh, the differential equations first, like we did with the other two problems, and then we are going to go into the Laplace domain. So we're going to have a look at mass number two to start. So it's going direction yt. So this is the displacement of mass number two. And for, th for this problem, we're going to assume that um, the displacement yt is greater than um, xt. And same with the velocity, just so we can uh, figure out our forces. So since yt is, going, is uh, far further displaced than xt, we're going to have a force downward from spring Ks, which is equal to y minus x. And in the same way, we're going to have a force uh, that is from the damper, which will be y prime minus x prime. So these are our two forces for mass number two. And so we're going to go into our sum of forces equals mass times acceleration. So we'll do this right here. So we have m2 y double dot is equal to ks sorry negative ks because we are going uh, opposite of the direction of motion y minus x uh, minus b y prime minus x prime so again we're going to take the laplace of this so we're going to go equals the Laplace of this side, which is equal to negative ks Okay, so taking the Laplace of this, we have m2 um, s squared y um, minus our initial conditions, which will be s y naught minus y prime naught. And again, the problem states that these initial conditions actually go to zero for this model, so it greatly simplifies the left side of the equation. You have negative ks, um, capital Y minus capital X minus uh, the damper, which is going to be um, s times y minus uh, y naught. And then we're going to have plus sx uh, minus x naught. Again, these initial conditions go to 0. So now what we're going to do is we're going to simplify this. And we're actually going to bring all the y terms to the left side of the equation and all the x terms to the right side of the equation. So what we're going to have here is we're going to have y, m2, s squared. And then we're going to have a ks value. It comes over, it becomes positive. And then a bs value as well. And then the other side, we're going to have our x's, which is going to be ks plus bs. And 
this is the final term or final equation for mass number two. So now we're going to have a look now at mass number one with displacement x respect to time. So now looking at mass one, we can actually take the opposing forces from m2 and apply them to m1 because they're equal and opposite. So we're going to have ks um, y minus x and b y prime minus x prime. And then we have this term down here. So the force in this spring kw is going to be the displacement of rt compared to xt. So that means that uh, this term for kw is going to be x minus rt. So uh, if x is greater than rt, we're going to have a force pulling downwards. So now, we're, again, we're going to do our F net equals ma analysis. So our mass one, um, x1 double dot, the acceleration, is equal to, these forces are actually going in the correct direction uh, as a displacement. So we're going to have ks y minus x uh, plus b y prime minus x prime. And then we're going to subtract this kw value. Subtract kw x minus rt. OK, again, we're going to take the Laplace of both sides. So we're going to have All right, so again, we're going to take the Laplace of this, uh, similar to what we did on this side. So we're going to have m1 s squared x minus s x initial condition of 0 minus uh, x prime at 0. And again, like the other problems, these initial conditions go to 0. And then we're going to have ks. Um, y minus x plus b s y minus s naught um, plus s x minus x naught. And then we're just going to continue this down at the bottom for the sake of room. Minus kw x minus r in the s domain. All right, so now what we're going to do is we're going to simplify this equation, and we're going to bring our x's and our y's to the left side of the equation, and we're going to leave our rs on the right side of the, the equation. And rs is uh, typically a disturbance to the system, such as this speed bump that is shown there. So we're going to have our x term, m1, s squared. We're going to look at this side. We're going to have a ks, and then we're going to have a uh, b times s. And then we're also going to have this kw term in here as well. Right? And then we're going to subtract the y values, because when we bring them over, all our y's are going to become negative. So we have our ks plus bs is equal to kw rs. And that is the terms for mass number one. So this is a solution to this mechanical problem, and that is all. So now we're going to look at our final question, which we're actually going to take a uh, control system that's in the Laplace domain and actually bring it back to the time domain. So 
This problem looks uh, pretty confusing at, st at the beginning, but these uh, 19 and 20 uh, from your Laplace tables are actually gonna play a big role. So there's two ways to solve this problem, is we can go the partial fractions route, which will be provided in the tutorial solutions, or we can go to this route in which we actually convert uh, our denominator to uh, of this form into this form that we see down at the bottom. And between 19 and 20, we can actually create these, this equation uh, very quickly. So what we're gonna do is everything that is the denominator will be shown in green. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start by taking this denominator and trying to get it into a form sim similar to this. Uh, we will have to have this b squared form as if uh, we went into the s minus a squared form. Let's just evaluate it out. which obviously doesn't actually fit the form that we have here. And so we know that we're gonna have this positive B term down at the bottom. So knowing that, we're gonna go forward and we're just gonna start with the denominator. So we know zero is equal to S squared plus S plus one. What we're actually gonna do is we're gonna separate these so we get terms similar to what we have here. So for instance, we're gonna start out and we're just gonna pull an S from the beginning. So we have S plus one and then plus one. So what we can do from here is we can actually pull out a 0.5. So we get uh, very similar values. So S, S plus 0 0.5. And then we have 0 0.5 S plus one. Again, we can pull uh, this form out of here. So we're gonna go S, S plus 0 0.5, and we're gonna go plus 0 0.5 S plus 0 0.5. And this is, we have this extra 0 0.5 here, which we're gonna bring out, and it's gonna go plus 0 0.75 at the end there. Okay, because this is 0 0.25 plus 0 0.75 equals 1, and so that corresponds to our denominator here. So this can be broken down into its simplest form, which is S plus 5 squared plus 0 0.75. So uh, what we have here is something very similar uh, exactly similar to what we have at the bottom of these two uh, inverse Laplace equations so that we can use that going forward. So our a in this case would be negative 0.5 and our b would be the square root of 0.5. So again, this is our new denominator here. So I'm gonna rewrite the initial equation in that form. So we are going to have rs is equal to s plus 0 0.5 squared plus 0 0.75. And then at the top, we are going to have a simple s plus one. So now with this new equation, we're gonna start and we're gonna look at our denominators that we have here. So, sorry, the numerators that we have here. So if you look at the denominators, we know A is gonna be negative uh, 0 0.5. So that means this term of this Laplace, uh, of this inverse Laplace equation, Okay. Yeah, yeah. So we ha now have this new equation here in which the denominator is set to what we need as a function of our inverse Laplace uh, equations. And now we need to adjust our numerator so that it fits these two equations so that we can get our final answer in time domain. So as we see here, we have an S plus one and 20 has an S minus, minus A. And since we know the value of A is negative 0 0.5, A 
and we know that b is equal to square root of 0 0.75. We can actually expand this numerator uh, here. So this is what we're going to do going forward. So I'm going to do this on uh, this side, and everything in orange will be responding to the numerator. So we have 0 equals s plus 1. We know to satisfy this equation here, we're going to, this is going to have an s plus 0 0.5. So to expand this out, we have a 0, s plus 0 0.5, plus 0 0.5. OK, so this is our new numerator that we're going to have. So now our equation is going to look like this. Okay, so now what we see here is we're actually going to put it into these two forms here. So, Rs is going to be equal to S plus 0 0.5 squared plus 0 0.75. And so if you notice, this actually, what we have written down right now is actually the, we can solve it with the inverse of Laplace using number 20 in your tables. So this form is fine and is good, and we no longer need to touch it. So now we're going to look at the other form that we have here, which is, uh, Zero point five divided by our new denominator. And if you notice on for number nineteen, B is at the top and we have the square root of B at the bottom. So we know that B is uh, is equal to the square root of zero point seven five. So what we can actually do is we can uh, multiply the top and the bottom by 0 0.75 and actually bring this 0.5 value outside. So when we rearrange to get that, we have our term that we already, already have figured out to solve number 20. Then we're going to have this term, which is 0 0.5 divided by the square root of 0 0.75. And then up here, we're going to have the root of 0 0.75. And at the bottom, we're going to have, again, the same term, s plus 0 0.5 squared plus 0 0.75. So now we have the term for number 19 as well as number 20 from your tables. So we're going to go forward, and we're actually going to take uh, the inverse Laplace of uh, this function. So we're going to take the inverse Laplace of this function here. Now I'm just going to switch to the same color since we solved it all out. What we are actually going to do is we're going to bring this, this uh, number out front of the inverse Laplace since we, uh, we're not actually required to have it within. So that actually breaks down to root 3 over 3. And then root 0 
S plus 0 0.5, 0 0.75, sure, extend. Okay, and our result is going to be a RT is equal to, um, look at, so we got our number 20 to start, and we can actually, since these uh, figures are the same, or terms are the same, we can bring it outside of the brackets. So we're going to get A, which we now know is uh, negative 0 0.5, so half T. And so that's fine. Then we're going to bring it out of the brackets. And this term will give us a uh, cosine uh, BT. And then B is actually root 3 over 2. And then we're going to have this item out in front. So we're going to have root 3 over 3 sine um, root 3 over 2 t. OK, and then this is our final function in the time domain. So if you went the partial fraction route, it actually is a lot longer of a problem to do. So what this problem is meant to do is it meant, it's meant to get you thinking. So when you see this form at the bottom, you're instantly going to go, OK, let's separate it and put it into partial fractions. Well, there sometimes is an easier way to do it. So always uh, go forward and look at your Laplace tables and see, hey, maybe this way will uh, work out better. Sort out your denominator and see if it'll work that way. And again, you can see the long solution along with the short solution uh, in the tutorial solutions when it is posted. And that is all that we have for tutorial two.